In this lecture, we want to understand the concept of relative velocity of sliding. We employ a typical example to learn how to deal with this concept when constructing a velocity polygon using the method of relative velocities. What we have in this example is known as a crank shaper mechanism. Let's describe it. We have a link number four supported by the ground through a pin. Slider number three is supposed to slide along link four. We can imagine a prismatic joint between slider 3 and link 4. Then link number 2 hinged to slider 3 from one end, and at the other end it is supported by the ground through a pin. Next, link number 5 connected to link 4 at point B. And finally, slider number 6 pinned to link 5 at point C. It slides horizontally on the ground. Here is the way a crank shaper mechanism works. As you know, it moves forward gently and returns back so quickly. The essential dimensions of the mechanism have been given, including the positions of supports O2 and O4, the length and angle of link 2, the lengths of links 4 and 5, and the initial position of point C. As velocity information, the angular velocity of link 2 has been given. The velocity polygon at the instant shown has been requested, and from there we want to find the velocities of points A, B, and C, and the angular velocities of links 3, 4, and 5. Let's start the solution from the velocity of point A, which is omega 2 times O2A, and is perpendicular to link 2. We bring it to the diagram starting from the origin OV and ending to A prime. Now let's look closer at slider 3. From one side, slider 3 is pinned to link 2, and on the other side it is constrained to slide along link 4. While pin A is moving along link 4, we can imagine its relative motion with respect to an instant footprint on link 4. Let's call this footprint as A4 because it belongs to link 4. Pin A and its footprint A4 are instantly at the same position. But they have different velocities, as they belong to different rigid bodies. Therefore, the velocity of pin A with respect to its footprint A4 is called relative velocity of sliding. So the next target is the velocity of point A4. We can relate it to pin A. Imagine the relative velocity of pin A with respect to its footprint A4. If we add it to the velocity of the footprint A4, then we have the velocity of pin A. Velocity of point A is known, and we have it on the diagram. Since point A4 belongs to link 4, its velocity must be perpendicular to link 4. And we bring it to the diagram starting from OV. The relative velocity of sliding is along link 4 and we bring it to the diagram at A prime, the head of velocity of A, because this relative velocity should end to the velocity of A. The two extensions intersect here, which we call as A4 prime. Here is the velocity of A4, which we can measure. And this vector must be the relative velocity of A with respect to A4 at this measured magnitude. Now let's check and make sure about the directions of the velocity vectors. According to this equation, velocity of A must equal velocity of A with respect to its footprint A4 plus velocity of A4. From the velocity of A4, which is omega 4 times O4A, we can find omega 4. For the direction of omega 4, we put the velocity of A4 on point A4 to see at which direction it will rotate link 4 about O4. Now that we have the angular velocity of link 4, we can find the velocity of point B which is omega 4 times O4 B. At this magnitude, we draw velocity of point B perpendicular to link 4. Then we transfer it to the diagram starting from OV and we call its head as B prime. The last velocity is for point C. We can relate it to point B, so velocity of C equals velocity of C with respect to B plus velocity of B. Velocity of B is known and we have it on the diagram. Just to be clear, it is from OV to B prime. Velocity of C is along its path on the ground, which we bring to the diagram starting from OV. 
velocity of c with respect to b is perpendicular to bc. And we bring it to the diagram at b prime to continue velocity of b. The two extensions meet at c prime. Here is the velocity of c. And this vector is the velocity of c with respect to b, which must be added to the velocity of b to yield velocity of c, as this equation says. From the velocity of c with respect to b, which is omega 5 times bc, we can find omega 5. For the direction of omega 5, we put the velocity of c with respect to b on point c to see at which direction it will rotate link 5 about point b. The solution is now completed. Here is the velocity polygon, the absolute velocities of points a, a4, b, and c, as also seen on the diagram, velocities of a, a4, b, and c. The relative velocity of the slider 3 along link 4 and the angular velocities of links 3, 4, and 5. Note that omega 3 is the same as omega 4, because due to the prismatic joint between slider 3 and link 4, they cannot have any relative rotation with respect to each other. Now, let's review and highlight what we have learned about the concept of relative velocity of sliding. Here is the key equation we used. It suggests the velocity of pin A equals its relative velocity with respect to its footprint A4 plus the velocity of A4. In other words, the velocity of pin A has two components, its relative velocity with respect to its footprint on link 4 and the velocity of its footprint A4. We simply call them sliding component and footprint component. Let's observe what happens to these two components during an entire motion cycle of the linkage. Now, let's look a bit closer to what really happened. As the linkage moves from its initial position, the sliding component slows down to zero and the footprint component makes the whole velocity of A. Then we continue towards the situation where link 4 reaches its extreme position and stops. At this position, the footprint component is zero and the sliding component is identical to the velocity of A. After this stop, link 4 changes its rotational direction and we continue until the sliding component again slows down to zero. At this situation, again, the footprint component dominates. Then we continue until link 4 reaches its other extreme position and stops again. And again, no footprint component. All we have is the sliding component. Then we return back to the initial position.